what we're doing, Beth. Starting out the, um, putting the mainsail back on, and part of that is untangling all the reefing lines, which were all twisted around the mast boom, just to keep them out of the way. So, the new job is taking them all back up again. So why are you wearing um, your nitrile gloves? Because if you've ever used, because if you've ever picked up seal battens, you'll find that fiberglass fragments stick in your skin. I'm rubbing them out of my skin for three or four days and they're horrible, they're absolutely flipping horrible. So if I've got a handle of battens, I've got nitrile gloves. It's not for the ropes, it's totally the wrong product for ropes, but you do what you can with what you've got. And I think this is the forward line. Why are you destroying our lead line? <laughs> we now have a depth gauge. <laughs> oh, it was just very disconcerting in that um, you couldn't actually physically test it until we were in the water. So, you know, you had this piece, big piece of expensive kit, but it's in the water now and it's now working. Fantastic! Well, yesterday we splashed and um, we then put on the sails and did some boat tidying like I tidied the lines in the lockers um, but today what we have got to do is we have got to scrub the decks they are one filthy thing scrubbing the decks, scrubbing the dinghy and scrubbing everything we can really Okay, so we're back at sea and you're looking into the engine compartment and we've just had a very large car ferry come past. Yeah, we um, decided to go to Tower Cardinal. Um, basically, the crew, as for me, absolutely shattered. It's a mini shakedown. I'll just feed you some lines here. Go on. Yeah, we just... Um, because... Um, this morning, yesterday we put the sails on, today we've scrubbed the deck. Uh, we're now at Tower Cardinal and we have got a tiny leak. But we've identified the leak. Um, I've only got one clip on the hose tail that goes on to the... Um, the impeller housing. Impeller housing. And you should have two. But I should have two. And... Uh, that's my fault because that was one of my jobs I should have done, but never mind. But I'm going to put them on because you're Luke zombied. I know. It's got to that stage where we've been going, going, going. And I can now relax and it's just coming over me. It's that way. I'll tell you what. Go on. I know I was feeding you lines. You didn't look very satisfied with them. I'm supposed to feed you curry. <sighs> Sounds much better on your fire. Go for much it. Much better. Well, it's been a grey, grimy day. It was a horrible start at 4.30am. Uh, <laughs> it was cold, it was wet, it was miserable. And that's why we're in the thermal gear. Because although it's the middle of summer, you wouldn't know it. Uh, there's low level grey clag everywhere. We've had to motor most of the way. But recently, we've managed to turn and pick up some wind. And we've got the mainsail up. We can't use the Jenny yet because we would wind up crossing a, a sh an area of shallow ground we don't want to cross. We are extremely close hold for it. Um, we couldn't use the Jenny this close. We'd need to open more to the wind, but the problem is that would take us over some dangerous ground and we don't want to do that. So we'll wait a while before we get the Jenny out. But the highlight has been seeing three pods of dolphins. One of them really, really close to the boat. So that has improved the day no end. Getting the sail up has also improved the day. And we hope we're just going to go somewhere really nice so we can just settle down for a couple of quiet days after basically knocking our melt out in the yard for a month.
We've had enough, we need a break. Well, Beverly and I have decided to have a rest day today. Um, we've been doing work on the yard and then we've done some sailing. We're now in the Menai Straits, so we're going to have a rest. So on our rest day, I'm sorting out the V-Burr, Beverly's putting on the side panels and uh, in a bit we're going to sort out the uh, depth gauge. I see things are getting serious. The manual is out. The manual is indeed out. Um, as we covered some time back our depth gauge went bing and we had it tested and they said that basically it wasn't coming back so we had various options a second hand one which we tried but 20 year old units the same age as ours were quite expensive so we nearly just plump for a new one it was going to cost us a fortune either way might as well get a brand new one um so we got the new one put it in in the yard didn't seem to work put it in when we're in the water and thankfully it's working so that then takes us to the next question of where do you put the zero line now when they come out of the box the zero line is where the transducer is just forward of the keel and it's about a meter and a bit down um but there are three options really. You can put it up at the water line, you can have it at the transducer, or you can have it down at the bottom of your keel. Where do you draw the line for zero? And there's even a little picture in the Raymarine manual that shows that. Uh, so our old one was set to keel depth and we reused that, but we just decided this is the time to think about it. So we posted a question on the Sail Cruising UK Facebook group and said, where do you put your zero line for your depth gauge? And the answers came flooding back. Um, well, let's dispose of the transducer one. Almost nobody said it. I think somebody said, I do, just for a laugh. But there was like one person. Um, for people at the waterline level, they are people who generally talk about ease of navigation and cross-checking your charts, things like that. And they just generally prefer it at the waterline level for those sorts of reasons, also for calculating anchor depths. Uh, there was a lot of other people who basically went for keel or lower on the grounds that if somebody else was navigating your boat at the time, um, they might not know your keel depth. But if it says zero in the thing, they'll, they'll, they'll yell for help. Uh, or it could be that you have a high load situation, bad weather, you're going into unfamiliar areas and you just forget to subtract your keel. It's easier to have the zero down there than up at the waterline. I would say that it broke slightly more for the keel in the waterline and we're probably gonna go back to setting at the keel level and we'll add a couple of centimetres just for safety margins. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to set it to be at the keel depth rather than the waterline depth. And for other calculations, we'll just remember to add two metres because that's what we're used to doing anyway. So I think that's the answer for us. Um, the only problem is, although the depth gauge is working, our logger isn't. Ah yes, the speed logger which did work with the old ST60 unit isn't working this and we think what we've done is damage the connections in the back of the uh, unit where they slide on the little spade connectors. We're going to see the agent who sold it to us in the next week or so and we hope he can sort it out for us. We'll see how it goes. But really losing the speed logger is not a big issue for us. We The depth gauge is the bigger issue for us. We much prefer having depth. We don't really worry about the speed logger that much. Um, it is useful um, for some calculations, but like you say, it's just useful rather than we have to have. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Oh, and we've got the military coming across again. They've been crisscrossing the sky all day, chasing each other around the place. I just wish they'd make their mind up and go back and have dinner. But there you have it. Right, okay, so our, our depth is 13.7 at the moment from the transducer. Yeah. So... We're going into calibration. Yeah. And because we're um, doing key, uh, keel, keel, offset. Set, oh, keel offset, it's negative numbers. So it's minus 1.6. Minus 1.6, right? So I think that's right. See if the um, thing will calibrate and just see. And it's now down to 12.1. One. That is correct, yes. Yeah. Okay. Happy days. Well, we were going to talk about mirroring tactics and then this little cat just rolled up beside us and uh, it's one of our viewers. <laughs> He's just asking us about passage times through the swellies. So we've just been downstairs checking, looking up. He's mirroring up at the minute on the ball next to us and we'll shout the instructions across to him in a minute. 
but it just goes to show in the sailing business things rarely go to plan <laughs> It's the Liverpool Convention! Where's the pub? Are you coming? Which pub? <laughs> oh, right, oh, didn't, the... didn't know there was one. Yeah, the uh, one at uh, Menai Bridge. Go on. Well, it seems like the Liverpool Convention is um, converging on. Um, Menai, so we're going to go down to Menai Bridge, more there, and basically chat and chew the, chew the salt or whatever it is. Breaker 1-6, this here's the rubber duck. We got ourselves a convoy. And I wonder how many of our viewers will know which movie that line comes from. We're at the Liverpool Arms. The Liverpool Crew. So is it raining, Dana? Not where we are, but um, we came up the Menai Straits hang just on, to... Hang on. Go on. Yeah, not where we are, but we came up the Menai Straits just to uh, just get a bit of a sail in today. <laughs> um, we only had to move, what, a mile? But we've gone up the Straits just to come down just so that we could sail. But we're going to get a dunking in a few minutes, I reckon, because it looks that way inclined. Skipper! Giving it to Annie! You was. I know. Oh, I can't even see the next boy, I can tell you. And just about. Dear. So we're in, we're on uh, a mirroring ball that we have been loaned by one of our viewers. Absolutely. It's this is the kind of thing that really helps us to carry on is a free mooring. <laughs> but um we're just near Bangor Pier. Um but I'm gonna take the opportunity to go and see my mum for a few days. So I'll be leaving Beverly on her own, but I'm sure she can cope. Somebody has to swab the deck. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you'll be doing something and keeping yourself busy, but I'm going to see my mum for a few days. But... So in the um, <sighs> living in the moment, you've just been drenched. Yeah, I'm soaking wet. Um, I had wanted to, because we, we didn't have to go very far. We only had to go from the pier to this mooring. We thought, you know what, let's have a little sail at it. No, we did not. Let's have a little drenching. <laughs> it's straight time, didn't it? Absolutely, but, you know. It's also why um, I like to have weatherproof instruments. Yes, um, because it was just throwing it down, but the instruments can cope more than I could. Yeah, because you legged it. Yeah. That's because I, I put Annie on and I let her get on with it. Right, so we're here. It's time for a coffee. Yep. And then I think it'll be a boat shower. Ooh, er, as opposed to just a natural rain shower. Yeah, boat shower. Oh, you drip. <laughs> yep, boat shower is done. I have to say, I was very reluctant to have a boat shower at first, but... They're not that bad, actually. Um, it's amazing what you can clean with very little water. Yeah, but you've had a decent shower. You've washed your hair. You've shampooed, conditioned, scrubbed everything. Yeah, everything's scrubbed. My turn. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> 